I've learned that analysis is not just what appears on the balance sheet and income statement, although you should certainly be able to do that and look at it well. But, you know, and this, is, this, is, this may be the most valuable thing I tell everybody here. You know, based on what I know about this person, based on what I, I, all of the history I know about them, based on what I know about their financial circumstances, they just made XYZ move. In Charlie Munger's case, bought a ton of Alibaba. And what I see in China now just staggers, staggers me. There are factories in China that are just absolutely full of robots and are working beautifully. They're no longer using peasant girls to beat the brains out of our little shoe companies in America. What does that tell me about the world? How does that update my evaluation of the probabilities that something will be true or false? So I had to get to the realization that I am never going to know everything firsthand. I have to make those inferences. I have to study people like Charlie Munger, but also study people like Carl Icahn. And then when I see them make a move, try and understand why most of the time I won't. But every now and then, it will update my probabilities in such a way that I have an insight which will enable me to do something. So back to Charlie Munger. So that's some information on Costco. Charlie Munger also had an investment in a company called Posco. And it was a kind of like the rationale was not dissimilar to uh, Costco, this kind of low cost operator, as Nick Sleep would say, scale economy shared. It did not work out. And Posco, which is the leading steel producer in Korea, is an interesting business, but it has not delivered the kinds of shareholder returns that those of us who went into it were expecting. So now we go to Alibaba. I think that the company, as best I can understand, has reached a degree of centrality in the Chinese economy and in the global economy that as China grows, in spite of everything, all the other noise that is going on, it is extremely likely to be lifted. And in spite of not, not having Jack Ma at the helm anymore. And I, it seems to me that that's the kind of analysis that Charlie Munger has done. So uh, it's in this unusual place of being part of the uh, retail infrastructure of um, China and of the world, while at the same time having some really, really good economics going on around it. So one of the big inferences that I made, so, so here's a, so, so um, I happen to be aware that some people were selling Alibaba and buying other companies and Charlie Munger was encouraging them and agreeing with them that that was a smart move. And then I discovered three or four months ago, whenever it was, that he's been buying Alibaba while he's been encouraging other people to buy something else, which was really, really interesting to me. So the other sort of like, sort of like blockbuster company in China, Tencent, going back to my earlier point about kind of analyzing stakeholders and doing real sustainability analysis, I have a huge problem with gaming companies because I think that uh, many of those games are rotting the minds of our young people. It's interesting to me that the Chinese Communist Party decided to ban uh, children from playing more than one hour a week. And so for me, uh, gaming companies may be the new tobacco. And I think that that's part of the reason why he was not interested in Tencent. Last piece of the analysis, I happen to know, and this is a kind of inference, you know, he's got a huge investment with Li Lu. Li Lu has got extraordinarily good understanding of China. Li Lu is this Chinese and very, very genius investor who was at the Tiananmen Square demonstrations. He was one of the protesters. For a certain period of time, he was a persona non grata in China. And so I, that leads me to believe that Charlie Munger has a deep understanding of um, the place of Alibaba, not just in Chinese business, but the way the Communist Party sees Alibaba. I also bought some Alibaba. What I did was I sized the position right for, uh, I sized it well below what would have been right for me. I think often the answer when you're investing in public markets is position sizing. You're very lucky you can go, especially if you run a small fund, in many, many of the businesses that are out there, you can go as large or as small as you like. The last thing that almost keeps me up at night is the fact that China is a huge human rights abuser. There's no question about that. And I struggle with that. Uh, at the same time, I try to 
you know, what I tell myself is that so long as I think that the good that the Chinese Communist Party has done by lifting so many people out of poverty, it's a, something that has never happened in history before, uh, gives them some leeway. And we have to hope and pray that at some point they become more respectful of the minorities that live in their borders, the Uyghurs, Tibetans, and others. Um, that's my thinking about Charlie Munger and Alibaba.